Hey, welcome to Psychic Medium, Tony Green. This is the Wednesday edition, which was, um, is, was a Relationship Wednesday. Now, I will be taking relationship questions, but if you have other questions about life, love, career, finances, I'll also be taking them. Um, I realized from doing my show on Mondays at noon, there are so many people calling in and I can never get to everybody. So I'm trying to like expand that so that I can get, get to others and help others at throughout the week. Um, but if you have a relationship question, I would love to answer it the best I can. Uh, I want to thank all my co-hosts from the past, Scott. Rudy Dillon, who joined in and helped to answer relationship questions in the past. And I know they're all ready, willing, and able to come back. They've asked me if they can come back to do more relationship shows with me. And I will have them back and we will be doing them again um, or in part doing them. Okay, so for today, here's the... The details for today, for all the new callers, watchers, listeners, um, when I call your area code, please have one specific question available. Take me off of speakerphone because the, the, the audio is all coming through phones and, you know, through a computer. So if we can just take it off a of speakerphone, that would be the best thing to do. Also, um, Let's see, one specific question uh, and take me off a of speakerphone. I think that's everything. As we go, I know there's going to be more. I know there is. I'll be like, oh, yeah, I forgot to say this. So I air every Monday at noon for 30 minutes. I also air every uh, Wednesday at noon for 30 minutes. This show does air on uh WSCS, many streaming channels, including Roku, 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 and Rude Rangers TV, and almost every podcast out there. So be mindful of your questions. Oh, whatever you're asking, please know it is not only airing on this. We are on YouTube Live. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you, Fawn, uh, for joining me on YouTube. Anybody watching on YouTube, uh, just say hi. If you have a question, you can call in 845-277-9131. If you would ever, if you're watching on TV and you want to watch live, YouTube live Monday and Wednesday. Here we go to the first caller. And the first caller is 562. How are you today, 562? Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne. How can I help you? Hi, yes. I would like a love reading, please. So, Yvonne, um, I'm not sure if you weren't listening in the beginning or not. Um, and it seems like there's a bad connection there. Please have a specific question. If you want a full-on reading about love relationship, I'm very, very happy to do that. You can go to my website, Tony, T-O-N-I-G dot I-N-F-O, and I'll be happy to book a full-on reading about love, relationship, career, connect you with loved ones, all of the above. But for the purpose of the show and all the people that are waiting with questions, it's one specific question per person. I'm going to go to 856. 856, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, it's Rosemaria. How are you? I'm doing well, Rosemaria. Where are you calling from? I'm New Jersey. Hey, there are so many people from the East Coast that call in. I absolutely love that. So how can I help you today? What's your question? Um, I know I reached out uh, to a friend and not coming, came back, didn't respond back yet or all that happy stuff, and I left it in, we left it on bad, bad terms about a month ago. So I'm not sure when he said, um, I'm not listening, and it's when I want it 
when I want it and how I want it. So I don't know if it's going to go straight through now after I reached out with a nice text yesterday. Okay, uh, Rosemary, I, I, I want you to... Um... I'm, I'm really not sure what your question in all of that is. I, I heard that you reached out to a friend, and I heard you're not sure how it's going to go through. Um, is your question, is your friend going to reach back out? Is your question, what's, what's your question in that? Um, the question is, it's going to be a long-term relationship. No. Nope. Okay, going to reach out back to me or... Okay, this person might, thank you for clarifying for me, and now I can get straight to the point. Um, I'm hearing, I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm hearing, and I want you to really listen to all of it, because it's going to start out one way, and it's going to end another way. Um, this person probably will reach out to you eventually. I don't know when. I'm not going to give a timeline on that. However, um, this, this is, whether it's this person's decision or your decision, this needs to be over. And I'm sorry to say it so bluntly. Um, it's time. I just keep hearing it's time to move on. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. Whatever is going on right now in this situation, I'm hearing it won't be the last time. It, this will continue. Um, I feel like there are some drugs and or alcohol involved in this situation, whether it's you or another person with this situation, I feel like, and drugs can be, and let me explain this for everybody who has not listened or watched the show before. Drugs can be, um, drugs can be something as like somebody needs to be on medication and they're not on medication. Drugs can be uh, somebody's on a prescribed medication, but it's the wrong dosage and or the wrong medication. And it can also be somebody absolutely 100% abusing drugs like fentanyl is. I, I'm not accusing anybody of taking fentanyl. I'm just saying that's what I'm hearing. What I want to tell you is this person does not... Um, I'm going to say this and please, please, please don't come for me, folks. Um, this person does not have your best interest at heart, but they can't have your best interest at heart because I don't know if they have their best interest at heart or either that's you or them. Somebody doesn't have somebody else's best interest at heart, but they're really, they don't have their best, like, how can you have somebody else's best interest at heart if you don't if you don't have your own best interest at heart, right? If you're not able to take care of yourself and make the best decisions for yourself, how can you do it for somebody else? Um, the other thing I'm hearing is there's a huge communication problem here. It's almost you two might as well be speaking two different languages. I'm really sorry to say that, but um, the way the two of you communicate, you're talking to be heard, but you're not listening. So one, it's almost like even if you don't speak over each other, you're not listening to what the other person is saying. You're not. And, and let, let me rephrase that. Let me say this again. There's a difference between listening to somebody and hearing the words and understanding what they want. And that is very, 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 very important. If somebody is saying something and you're hearing it, but you're not grasping what that means to them, that's a problem. Um, and sometimes we're just trying to defend ourselves and or we're in a place where we can't understand what they're saying because we're too busy, like being focused upon ourselves, or, or there's too much going on in our in our mind. And I, I understand that I completely get that. But there's a huge communication block here. I don't feel like the communication is going to get better. Whomever is involved with the drugs and or alcohol, 
um, or there's a, that problem with the drugs and or alcohol, that, my dear, that is not going to go away for a, for a hot minute. That's going to be stuck with whomever this is. And if it's both of you, I, I'm, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to call anybody out on, on uh, TV or, but I am going to say it would be best if that situation gets worked out before anybody tries to be in a relationship because that's, that's really just unhealthy and, and needs to be fixed, but that's not going to go away anytime soon. And in order for you or that person to have a healthy relationship, you need to be healthy first. You, each of you needs to be healthy and then come together. Now, if you don't care about any of that, like some people are like, I don't care. I'm just going to go for it anyway. You have every right to do that. You can stay in a bad, unhealthy, toxic situation as long as you want to. That's your choice. But I really would recommend and ask you to look at all the dynamics of this situation before you go any further into it. I hope, Rosemary, is that is this helpful for you? Uh, yeah, um, uh, he's the one that's doing that, not me. Uh, drinking and stuff, so yeah, it's on his end. <laughs> and I feel like Rosemary, it's, he's been doing it for a long time, yeah, for a very, very long time, thank 30 you. years or thank, more. Thank you for confirming that. I'm, I'm really grateful that you confirmed that because you know, I hear things and I say them. That's my agreement with my angels is that when I hear something or see something, I'll say it because even if it doesn't make sense to me, I'm gonna tell you. He doesn't have the ability to care the way you deserve to be cared for. He doesn't have the ability to treat you the way you deserve to be treated. Now, what I'm going to say is, you know, women are nurturers, we're fixers. There are men out there that are also nurturers and fixers. Okay, there, there are. Um, I'm going to do a clearing again. I do this every Wednesday for our relationship sessions. I'm going to do a healing. We are ready, willing, and able to be in a healthy, loving relationship. I get a no, we're going to clear that. And then I'm going to go one further and say, we are addicted to drama. Oh my gosh, I get a yes. Of course we are. Our whole world is a big episode of drama right now. So I'm going to clear that. And I'm going to ask you to um, take a little bit of time to yourself and really figure out what it is that you want in a relationship. And what does a healthy person look like to you? And what does, when somebody, here's a really good one. I was working with a friend last night and this came up and I said to her, you, meet, you need to make a list. And I'm really big on lists, not manifestation lists, just really good practical love list. And this is what came up yesterday was you need to make a list. And on this list, it needs to be about love. When somebody loves me, how do they treat me? Like not in the past, how have I been treated when I thought somebody loved me? But what does it look like when somebody loves somebody? How do they treat them? How do they protect them? What kind of sense of security do they give them? What type of things do they do for this person? And, and it's important that the person that you're with is, um, is able to, you know, honor, honor you and cherish you body, mind, soul, give you that sense of security and stability, body, mind, and soul. Now, if somebody can't even do that for themselves because of drugs and or alcohol, believe me, there's no way if they if they don't care enough about themselves to take care of their body and their their mind long term, they can't they can't even think about anything with you long term because they might say they want a commitment. And they might say they want to be in a relationship. But trust me, if somebody can't even take care of themselves, thinking of, of a future for themselves and, and, and their body, then, then how can they do it for somebody else? You can't do for somebody else what you cannot do for yourself, okay? Second, how do I show love in a relationship? And when you write down how you show love, how you love somebody, make sure that these are healthy ways of loving. Taking care of somebody 
is okay to a certain extent. Trying to fix or save somebody, that's not your profession. That is not your job. Even a professional can't save half these boys out here that we are trying to save. And trust me, there are girls running around in women bodies and there are boys running around in men bodies. We even healers I know um, that are amazing healers. I do a lot of healing work on people. I, I cannot save someone, first of all, that I am involved with because there's too much emotion going on there. Second, I cannot save somebody who does not know that they do, that they need to be saved. If they think there's nothing wrong with them and what they're doing, oh, they're going to keep on doing it. They're, they are going to keep on doing it, okay? They don't see anything wrong with it. You're the problem for telling them there's something wrong with it. And third, ay, 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 what was number three? Angels, come on. And third, um, you can't save someone who, who again, just doesn't want to be saved. I don't know if that that's a repeat, but I'm just going to say this. Um, when somebody has, and this is really important for you, Rosemary, when somebody has an agenda of what they can get from somebody else, they can never be in that position to be in an equal situation. Okay. When somebody has an agenda, of what they can get, they can never give equally to what they're taking. And in every relationship, whether it's with friends, family, a partner, work, there needs to be balance. There just there needs to be equal love, equal give, equal take. And if there's not, somebody's going to be depleted and you know really hurt at the end of it. So moving forward, Rosemary, if you can let this guy go, and it's going to be tough because we feel like we failed when we didn't save somebody, but how can we save somebody that doesn't want to be saved again? But moving forward, I feel like in March, you have the potential to meet somebody much healthier, given the fact that you really look at why am I attracted to people like this? Why am I attracted to situations like this? If you can do that, you're going to be in such a, an amazing situation. Now, in the past, people have used the term, well, I, I saw the, you know, you saw the red flags, but you didn't, you didn't do anything. And I, I, I got this new, I have this new statement that I love to use because it makes so much more sense to people. You were in the building with this person. The fire alarm went off. Maybe you thought it was a far, false alarm. So you didn't leave the building, right? You stayed in the relationship. Well, guess what? You got burned. Then you ran out of the building because you realized the fire was real. You left. But then you thought, oh, I need to go back in and save this guy. I need to go back in and save this girl. I need to pull them out of the flames. But then you really got burned because then you both stayed in there and suffocated. And that's exactly what's happening in this situation. You're both just burning yourself up, suffocating. And this situation is time to walk on. It's time to let it go. And then in March, given the fact that you do the work, you look at yourself and why, you know, oftentimes we have partners that mim mimic our parents in one way or another. So look at that and then say, okay, I'm done with that. Now I want a new experience. I want to move forward. And then in March, you have the potential to meet somebody who is a lot healthier. But as soon as the, the, the signs go off, you have to be willing to walk away and know this isn't the only person in the world for you. Okay, love? Yeah. Thank you. So th thank you so, so much for calling in. I'm so grateful I was able to help you out today. I am going to go directly to the next caller, 205. That took a little longer than I thought it would. 205, how are you today? How can I help you? Oh, 205 is is uh whatever two we're gonna go to 262 262 how can i help you hello oh, hi. this is amy hi amy. hello can you hear me i can how are you, can... you? 
Yay, how are you? <laughs> I'm so happy to hear from you. Oh my goodness, Amy. So for Yay. Amy is actually yeah. somebody I know, you guys. I didn't know that until she said her name. Hey, what's up, Amy? How are you? What how can I help you, love? <laughs> uh, so my of course my question is kind of general because uh I think I, I like to think I don't want a relationship, but <laughs> the question is like if I ever were to be ready for a relationship again, is there is are there steps I need to take or is there anything I need to know about that to get ready to like you know clear okay. out the clutter to just like yeah. Okay. So Amy, on, um, on my shows this year, every year on my Monday shows, I'm doing a self-love clearing at the beginning or near the beginning of every show. And this past Monday at the eight minute mark, I did a lot of clearings for everybody. So I'm going to do a clearing right now um, for trauma. Okay. Um, and every show I try to remember to do clearings. And Amy, I'm so grateful I was able to take your call today because I do know Amy and I do know a little bit of her situation. And I'm going to say <clears throat> we've all experienced trauma in life and in relationships. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a clearing on trauma um, and not only for relationships, but any part of life. Okay. Okay. So if you feel this, you might feel it in your chest, your stomach, your mind. You might feel a little dizzy. Whatever it is, it's okay. The angels are coming in and clearing this out for you. Now, the one thing I do want to say that's really important is we have to realize um, we're not dating our our past boyfriends anymore. Um so when we've been in situations where, or we should, I'm going to rephrase that to, we're not dating our exes anymore. Not every single person is like our ex. I'm not even, I'm not the person I was when I was 18 or 20 or, you know, even 30. And so the people, how do I say this? Everybody changes and hopefully we learn and we grow. So moving forward, we have to realize that we are not always going to be put in front of people who are just like the people we used to know, because we're not even the people we used to know. And we meet people where we are. Okay. Phew. Thank goodness that made sense. I didn't know where they were going with that. So we meet people where we are. And sometimes in relationships, we are shown what needs to heal that sometimes it's just time in a relationship that we are shown what we need to heal and what we need to move forward from now other times in a relationship once we've done the work and we've cleaned it out we can meet somebody again where we are who has cleaned it out and we're there Amy, with you, because I do know a little bit, I'm going to say the biggest thing is just clearing out the trauma, just clearing out the trauma. And I'm getting um, that in acupuncture, I'm getting that left wrist again. Use acupuncture on your left wrist. And I'm going to show everybody here <laughs> i don't know very much about acupuncture but it's between the if you go to the palm of your hand down it's between those two bones there and then if you go your thumb down it's below the bone there those are the spots they're showing me that you really need to get needled in and work with and that will be a beautiful thing for you now i am going to say the the other thing i'm going to do one more healing or clearing for everybody listening, re-listening, watching. And it's that we often get attracted to the same type of person um, who is unhealthy for us. So I'm going to clear we're attracted to unhealthy people for us. I get a yes, we're going to start clearing that you can listen, re-listen to these all you want. These healings are extremely powerful. Now, you might 
feel it, you might not feel it. But these healings and these clearings, if you come back and listen, you know, once a day, once a week, once a month to them, or just continue to to listen and watch the show, you will find that slowly or quickly healing is an agreement between you and your highest self and the angels that you no longer need something and you can let it go because you feel safe without it now. And we don't let things go that we want to let go of. We let things go when we feel safe enough to let them go. Okay. And that is, that is just a true fact. If you still feel like you need to hold on to something to protect you so it will never happen again, so that you will not go through this again, so that you can remember the pain or the person, you won't let it go. But when once you've healed enough, you can let it go. So we're just going to clear heal that. Amy, the one thing I can say for you on a more personal level, you need to trust again. You just need to be able to trust again. That's all. Once you can trust again, the perfect person will come in. The absolute perfect person will come in. And he is not going to look like you think he's going to look. He is not going to behave like anybody else you ever knew. But you will be very, very happy. Okay, love? Okay. Thank you so much for calling in. It was such an honor and a privilege to be able to have you on my show today. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, everybody, we are hitting that 30 minute mark. And I want to let you know today I'm going to be a guest on um, Rudy's Room. Um, that's going to be uh, in about uh, 30 minutes, I'm going to be on that show. So I'm very excited about that. So please um, make sure you look that up and watch that also. I'll be back on Monday at noon. YouTube live, um, podcast live, you can call in or I'll be back next Wednesday at noon also. And um, again, you can call in either day. Both shows are 30 minutes long. I want to thank everybody who joined me on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching the replays. Um, and I want to thank everybody who, who called in today. Thank you so much for that. I'm so grateful for that. And I wish you all a very, very beautiful rest of the week. Thanks again. Thank you.